I, I remember uh, one time in kindergarten when I was getting all E's, when they give E's in kindergarten instead of A's. And I just decided one day, it's like, you know, I'm tired of being perfect. And I decided I purposely colored outside my balloons. <laughs> Oh, I like it. That's that's great. Yeah, I don't. Uh, they didn't grade with with letter. Oh, you know what? I think my kindergarten did numbers. Oh, that's funny. Never heard I of think that. yeah, I think it was like, and I don't know. I, I'm assuming one was bad and five was good, but it was like one through five. Yeah. Oh, that could be confusing if you know you're first, but you got a you got a one on your paper, and so is that good or is that bad? Oh. Yeah. And well. That was definitely report cards. Now you're now you have me questioning what the actual paper. I yeah, I don't remember that far. That was yeah. uh, you know, you just, just remember to pay your taxes, you'll be okay. <laughs> yeah, that's all that's I uh yeah, thirty two, that's all I need to care about right now is, is paying taxes and <laughs> pay pay um, taxes and, and make sure your your salary increases, you know, as you as you move on. Yeah. Along. Yes. All right. Um so uh, this, uh, show, we just kind of sit around and talk. Um, I, I always say I try to keep it to an hour, but it usually goes longer, but whenever you have to bail, just let me know. Okay. All right. Um, and we'll go from there. Um, I'm, sure I'm going to kick it off. Uh, I kicked the show off right away. Uh, it's, I don't know. I guess it's different. I don't know how many podcasts you listen to or, or, uh, have been part of, but I don't know. I do things a little differently, I guess. That's cool. I think different is good, especially with, you know, since the it's imbued with so many channels. You know. Yeah. Well, and that's so we uh, we just recently started doing live shows. Um, and the the thing that because this show is literally me sitting around talking to somebody slash interview show, like everyone does one of these. Uh, and then the live show, we turn into like a late night type of um theme where we have two guests on and have a monologue and stuff and i was like well we need to stand out from the crowd so how do we do that let's just do a fun intro every time and uh so like there's a new theme it's almost wrestling based where i come out to a theme song a new theme song every time that's it your dreams of being a wwf wrestler is has uh, been achieved oh god uh, yeah i mean and that's it's music. that is a, that was a dream of mine as a kid so well <laughs> it's, you grew up in the great. 80s man i'm, I'm sure you know, I enjoyed it for a stint, but I never, really, I, you know, but I saw a lot of kids, especially growing up in the South, that was definitely an affinity of theirs that they, you know, an aspiration of that was instilled into them. It's, um, well, I, I, you know, I guess I did live through more 80s than I didn't, but I've always considered myself a 90s kid because that's what I remember. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, I was born in 84, so I, I guess I was technically an 80s kid, but like, I don't know, my, I... I was shaped by the '90s. No, but uh, I, I guess I would have been too if it wasn't for being around older people most of the time. That was yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, you know, wrestling. Well, we'll we'll get into this in the show. Let's start the show off properly. Yeah, yeah. It's like we should be recording all this. Awesome. Welcome to this week's edition of Everything is Awesome. I'm your host, Kev, and this is a show where we sit down and talk to awesome people about awesome things. Uh, this week's guest is, uh, it's, it's, I don't know how to explain it, kind of a, a, a cool little um, uh, thing that's happened from just kind of getting involved with uh, who we call Team West Coast uh, over here, the Pod Squad, Once Upon a Wine, whatever you want to call them. If you're uh, a fan of... Uh, once upon a uh, time rock opera. You said that uh, before, and the, by the way. You got to yes. stutter before you say it. Oh, dude, I stutter all Nailed the it. time. No. But yeah, because the, the original title was Once Upon a uh, and then dot 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 yeah. anonymous. Uh, but uh, this guest wouldn't be possible without without Team West Coast, and uh, I'm so glad for it because like at first I was like, oh cool, like it's Hercules. I'm going to be talking to Hercules, but digging and i don't do any prep but like just after you followed me on twitter like digging into your twitter profile and seeing some of the the voices you've done in in your career and also listening to you on uh, once upon a wine uh, just 
I, I I've never really talked to a voice actor before. Uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show, Daniel Pierce. Did I get that right? Yeah, you did. You, you nailed that too, man. You're I'm terrible nice. at name pronunciations, uh, so. <laughs> It's good to be on a show that that claim that's that takes after Lego and says everything is awesome, and it puts yes. a, just your title alone puts a, a it's got an audio earworm, in my yeah. Mind. Well, and that was the point of it. So, so like this show originally was like, I've I've been planning. The, we're only we're less than a year into this show, and uh, I started planning it probably three years ago, and it was going to be a podcast about podcasts, and I was going to sit down and talk to podcasters. Mm-hmm. And at the time, I was so naive, but at the time, I was like, well, if I do that, like I'm going to talk to like five to ten people that I know, and then not have any more guests, because who's going to want to sit around and talk to me? And, and I mean, now I realize that like I, the, the podcasting community is super strong. So like literally I could talk to any podcast. I could have done, I think this is episode 35 that we're on. So, uh, I could have talked to 35 podcasters by now if I really wanted to, but could have, w- and you know, then you each help each other out and that kind of, thing. Oh, but yeah, it know. is. Yeah. I mean, that's, I, I, I joined this like local Philadelphia. I'm from the Philly area, mm-hmm. local Philadelphia, like, um, podcasting society thing. That's actually, they call it the Pi- Philadelphia podcasting society. And, um, you know, it's just a great community. And because of that, like, not only did I, you know, make friends that are in the area that are also podcasters, I've also like made, made uh, great network connections with other podcasts outside of the Philly area. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it's just like, it's, it's podcasting um is and i'm not in too many communities uh but podcasting is like one community that i'm really involved with that's just a really tight group uh and it's just it's cool that i've i've been doing this for nine years now it took me in the last year to like kind of really appreciate podcasting and embrace it for what it is now so you when you meet these other podcasters do you find that i mean is that a pretty variegated group i mean do you all have i mean considering that you know, it's usually a podcast is its own niche, and so do you, and they've learned a lot in yeah. the podcast. Or they're, you know, they themselves just have a lot of experience in finding out. Because every show you do, you sort of find you're like your interviewer, or maybe yeah. it's just two guys who talk, or a group of people. Yeah. Do you do you, you find that you're finding have you gained a lot of information just by hanging out with these people? Oh and, yeah, and yeah. Yeah, I mean, something that I um, have always been a fan of is just like a couple of guys sitting around talking. That's why this show isn't really an interview show, even though that's like the purpose of it. I, I consider it more of like a long form conversation. Yeah. It's something that like this conversation would happen if you and I were sitting in a bar having a couple of beers. Exactly. I'm right there uh, with you, man, except I'm not right there with you. Um, uh, yeah. I'm out of the way. Yeah, the beautiful thing about the internet, I mean, A, it gives us podcasts, but B, it gives me the ability to talk to a lot of cool people that aren't not in Philadelphia. Like, I, if I was limited to just this area, I really would be, I would have no one to talk to after a while. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, man, yeah, no, yeah. You talk that fast. You're like Micro Machines guy. Yeah. You've covered all of Philly. You should try yeah. every Philly steak cheese that there is to try out then. Uh, there's, I think, one guy I haven't had yet. Um, Maybe two. I, I think two. And Tony Luke. Hyperbole. I take it back. You know, I, 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 there was no room for a hyperbole then. So yeah, you. Really, <laughs> <laughs> I think I then I I want to if I go there then I got to know which where's the best place to get a Philly cheesesteak. That if you ever come out to Philly, I, my personal favorite place, um, if you're actually in the city of Philadelphia, is um, Pat's, and that that Pat's and Geno's are the two big ones. They're the ones like pretty much everyone knows by name. Pretty much everyone's going to refer you. A lot of people refer outsiders to Geno's. Um, it's Geno's is like flashy. Like if you're standing, they're across the street from one another. Geno's has like it looks like Las Vegas with all the lights. Uh, and and Pat's is really I don't want to say dull looking, but it's dull looking. Like it's just a normal uh, restaurant, not even a restaurant because you don't sit inside. Just like a normal like walk up eatery. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and that's my favorite. When I'm actually in the city, that's my favorite place. I think that there's this place called Steve's. Um, Pat's is the king of cheesesteaks. Steve's is the prince, and I think Steve is actually related to uh, Pat. And um, he's uh, he's got a couple shops, Steve, uh, and one like there's some in Philly, there's some in my neck of the woods. I live in the suburbs. I'm about an hour out of Philly, and um, so like locally, like I can get a good cheesesteak anytime I want. And I that's Steve's. You know the how two. I, I it, what 
assures me that, that the food is good there is that they're not worried about they're not trying to be creative with our our witty on on their their names of their store or the restaurant because it's just <laughs> yeah. hey, you know i'm steve so it's gonna be steve you know, it's just, just, just you know it, it's like there's no thought to it it's just like uh, uh, yeah it's my store so it's it's yep it's Scotty's. You know. And that's every cheesesteak shop. I don't think I've met. <laughs> uh, I don't think I've been to or heard of a cheesesteak shop in Philadelphia that has a witty name to it. No, no. Uh, I I went out to. I, there's. I'll tell you two cheesesteak stories. All right. Uh, one was in New York. Awful cheesesteak. I went to New York. I used to travel for work a lot, so I was in New York, and I asked for a cheesesteak at wherever whatever restaurant we were at, and they literally on a long roll through like a piece of steak with cheese on it. Not like, like a Philadelphia cheese steak is like chopped up minute steak. Basically. Um, this was like a legit, like thick cheese steak, not chopped up, not anything. Just a, a, they get, they're going to make you chew for your food, man. <laughs> it's uh. And and I, I don't even remember the place. Otherwise, I mean, I probably wouldn't bash it on air, but like it was like a hotel bar or something yeah. awful. Uh, I, I tra- doing the same job traveling out to California. I was, I think it was near Mountain View, mm-hmm. if that's a place out there. There's like an amphitheater somewhere out that way. Mm-hmm. Uh, and one of the like little restaurants in the amph- uh, amphitheater place was, um, it, I forget the name of it. But it was something. It was like a person's name, Philly Cheesesteaks. So like it was, it was the essence of a Philly cheesesteak place where it was just the name. Um, but they tagged it with Philly cheesesteaks because it was out in California. And it was the second best Philadelphia cheesesteak I've ever had uh, mm. because the person is from Philadelphia and imports their bread and everything from Philly. Um, so, and I forget the name of it, but if you go to the amphitheater that's in the Mountain View area, I believe, then mm-hmm. that's where you can get it. But yeah, so you can get a pretty good cheesesteak out your way, assuming you're in that area. That's good. Well, I trust LA is, I always tell people L- Los Angeles is the world is here. And yeah. so, you know, we're never going to get the authenticity that each, you know, native land has. But yet, you know, we have a touch of culture enough, at least the people in, and they've brought their own, you know, their, their food and, and uh, sometimes their culture and regrettably their driving skills to, uh, <laughs> to the land of Los Angeles. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I can imagine. I Because I've only been out that way once. So I don't remember it all, of mm-hmm. course, because I probably was drunk the whole time. When, but, uh, well, yeah. Are you sure you made it to Los Angeles, or were you in Vegas? Uh, well, it could. I I know I had a. I think I actually for that trip I had a layover in Vegas, so maybe I didn't make it out there. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I don't. I all I remember the going out to that trip besides the the work that I did at the the Philly cheesesteak place was discovering In and Out Burger. Mm. Uh, that's where I discovered In and Out Burger, and I I I've never had a cheeseburger better since being out west. Like. I miss that. I, so, I, and tell I'm a me fat about kid next. Heart, I so. think I've had a total of maybe three bites of an In and Out Burger. And oh, really? I've never gone there to order myself. I've taken people there or I've picked up food for for people there. But well, I have it, never I've never been there and well, on my own accord. So so and for people listening that don't know who you are, I I also mentioned that you played Hercules in the Once Upon a Time There's rock opera. Many people in this town who knows who I am and I think you know all of them. So <laughs> Well, anyone that's listening, uh, Dan, what do you go by? Dan, Daniel? D- Daniel's, I'm, this is whatever, but Daniel. Okay, I mean, okay. So Daniel. People, so if you say, if you say uh, hey, Fred, and I'm like, okay, yeah, we're, <laughs> I'll roll with it. Sure. See, Daniel plays Hercules in the in the spoof of Once Upon a Time that Team West Coast put together. Uh, and, you know, everyone knows what Hercules look like, looks like. Daniel literally looks like, and if you need a visual reference, Go to the Hercules TV show of the '90s, was it with, yeah, um, with Sorbo? With, with Sorbo, like a a slightly smaller version of Sorbo, maybe yeah. is what I would describe you of with right. much longer hair and a beard. <laughs> um, well, thanks, that's, man. I take that as a compliment. So, uh, like, you are like when you when I first watched. I mean, I God, Ace introduced me to to that world. I guess it's been three, four years at this point where they first, where you guys did that first episode. Yeah. Uh, and been, I think it's, uh, yeah, you know, it's, I it's think been a it's, while. It's, it's, I, I don't know if it's three or four or four years. It's weird. It's yeah, I, somewhere I, along that line. Yeah. It's, it's when Ace and I talked a couple months ago, we, we were, we couldn't figure it out. 
And I think I figured it out afterwards and I posted about it. So just refer back to the Ace episode and, and look at the show notes. I have it right there. Um, but yeah, so I remember watching it and and um, seeing you. And I'm like, wow, that's this dude is Hercules. <laughs> it's um, And then like, and recently, now you should be uh, proud because I don't usually do much research on my guests because I like that um, authentic conversation that, that happens when I don't know anything. Yeah. So of course, but for you, I was like, well, I, cause in your interview with once upon a wine, which you can listen to on once upon a time, spoof.com. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's episode 88. Yeah. Latest uh, episode but, still. So we haven't yeah. done one yet. Yeah. Yeah. By the time this one drops, they'll have at least one more new one uh, out. Cause they just sent it to me to edit. But um, yeah, I think it's episode 88. Um, and um, that's where like, I found out that like, you're really like into voice acting. So let's, before we get there, let's start, let's start at the beginning. Cause you mentioned you grew up in the South. So where, where did you come from? Uh, where did you come from? Where did you grow up? In the beginning, no, I, I was in a small Eastern town in Texas. Uh, it's, it's actually shares the border of Arkansas and called Tex Arcana. So, and it's basically, we're just, we're like five, five to 10 miles north of Louisiana and then maybe 15 to 20 miles south of Oklahoma. Uh, but we're very proud of, we on the Texas side, which is really two thirds of the city. And um, in there, it's, it's Tex Arcana is, is if you're an artist or of any creative mind, it's a great place to move away from. <laughs> As soon as you graduate, you got to get out of there. Uh, and is that what you did? As soon as you graduated, well, you were not, out? not on the day. I tried to. I chased money for a little bit and trying to see how I can get my footing here and there. And entrepreneurial ideas got thrown my way, and I ended up in a Ford truck and sunken in uh, in, in water with debris after a hurricane in Louisiana because I was cleaning the hurricane weather, and uh, somebody led me onto that little business. And I said, no, okay. And then I just I skipped out. And uh, on going up to Nashville, Nashville had always been a second home. Nashville, Tennessee had always been a second home to me growing up since I was five. It was really my two closest sort of I, I, not, I'm closest in the way that they're buddies. Uh, my my maternal yeah. aunt and uncle, really the side of my family I grew up with the first half of my life uh, or the you know, first quarter is. And then I my uncle was like my big brother. And he's the reason I'm into a lot of the, and I get a lot of the pop culture that the world is and the movie industry is so heavily banking on. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I grew up with him, and and so those two people, and then they were kind of buddy. They got each other. My mom was more of a surrogate of, you know, I'm talking about emotionally and spiritually to her father, while the other two were sort of this like we got to get out of here as well. So mm-hmm. I guess naturally I, I adopted that mindset, just being of the of the creative kind. And just being a sort, we were all three outliers. And my aunt, she had moved to Nashville early on when I was four. And then my uncle had always, so we would always visit. And I was just introduced to, it was like Wonderland to me. And yeah. uh, so I kept on hitting that. And then I always had the creative bug. I mean, when I was four years old, I just remember stacks of VHSs and I watched everything. I mean, when I think about it right, and I'd watch them on repeat. And I had a bunch of He Man toys. I remember that probably the best Christmas I ever had was either my fourth or fifth Christmas, but the fourth one was the one that was just, I had a plethora and they all set it up for me of these, these He-Man figures with, uh, it wasn't gray skull. It was that, that cave that I, I can't remember the painted face dude where you, you oh, actually okay, put yeah. your hand in the, in the rubber glove of, I can't remember what it's called, but you know, yeah. I just remember waking up and seeing that. I was like, dude, I, you know, I got the. I got I got I got them all now. I mean, that's back in the day. It was cool to catch He Man. Yeah, you, <laughs> you get your parents. You beg your parents to go yeah. to go and get them. But uh, um, so I know, Nashville was sort of always, you know, I you know, was, I knew the big city or bigger city life was where I wanted to be. Not not in the ideas of you know you know nothing materialistic. Just the ideas of of opportunity and just there was more to it than just playing out in the yard or which is great i mean I'd, I'd love to have a house out in the country uh but just to go out and actually experience culture and then uh, back to the you know i would move i think i really got because i really believe that in the first five years and i think this is pretty scientifically proven as well of your life whatever you experience you're so you're very impressionable yeah. as as a, as a human being in those first five years and that's really where your personality is formed 
And it's and I'm not this nature versus nurture. I think it's a little bit of it's definitely both. I mean, you have yeah. you you do have a your own signature fingerprint of personality when you when you're born, but it's definitely you, you're heavily you know impressioned uh, in, in the first five years. And uh, but so I watched everything. I watched you know, and I had to look back on it when I moved here to L.A. I got comfortable with uh, being okay with because uh, I had to get into my inner artist, and I had to be okay with my inner child. And I, so I, I really got in touch with what were the, the top five most influential, flu, flu, influential films for me as a child. And there were all these very dark fantasy films. And the number one has always been the never ending story. And it's probably one of the darkest children's stories just in its theme. And it's very heavy handed and just, and it's really, it, and that labyrinth, dark crystal, um, What's the other one? Uh, I think Excalibur was a huge influence on me, and then uh, there's another one. I, I can't. Uh, I can't. I, I, but I know Alice in Wonderland, but that's animated. It, yeah. But I, and in my VHS collection, it was it was First Blood. It was Creature. It was I Creature's like a knockoff of Aliens. It's a really bad B movie. Yeah. And then Critters. I watch Critters a lot. Of course, I watch Gremlins. I watch a lot of Alf. Uh, and then Alice in Wonderland and uh, Robin Hood. The fox, you know, the fox story. Yeah, the, yeah, 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 yeah. And so yeah. I watched, I, so I didn't have that much Disney in my life, but those two movies I watched a lot. And Alice in Wonderland's a trip, man. And because it, it leaps and bounds, I could explain to you why that's so much better than the Tim Burton stuff. And because it's, wow. it's more minimalistic, <laughs> it leads more to the imagination, it's darker. Uh, but yeah, but yeah, that's, you, you asked me where it all started. That's where it yeah. started, and that's sort of where the art, artistic signature came from. So that that's it in a nutshell. It's uh, well, hey, it's it's. I'll touch on it. There's a few things I want to touch on. I'll touch on uh, like the the five films or you named four of them that like influenced you as a child. They're all like on on my list of movies that why I haven't seen yet. Like I have not seen any of those movies, but I've always said I need to That's sit down crazy. and watch those movies. Well, I feel very fortunate to be to be, you know, for our paths to cross cuz if you were here like we're stopping everything, you know. Yes. It's <laughs> like one day this week, man. Yeah, get get your new castles out and uh, and let's yeah. let's watch some never ending story. Yeah, it's uh it's something like and every time I see any kind of reference to it, I'm like, I really should just sit down and watch this movie. Like there's no reason that I haven't watched it yet. Um except like I'll always find like right now, like it's always like, well, I gotta do a podcast or well, I have two kids and you mentioned like you you know, nature versus nurture, a little bit of both. I a hundred percent curry with that because mm-hmm. Um, I have two kids. One's four and a half. The other is uh, two and a half. Oh, cool! And my son's the older one, and he's his his nature is to be more like his uh, his mother, like uh, which is to, not to say lame, but like not like very in, not into pop culture. Like uh, my fiance Jen, she could care less about all the silly crap that I like, like mm-hmm. comic book movies, comic books. Uh, uh, which are not just what I'm interested in, but just as becoming and popping in my mind, like or like any like good movie. And and obviously we've just established that I haven't watched a lot of good movies, uh, or I just have not seen the good ones yet. But like Back to the Future or uh, Indiana Jones or Star Wars, like all that stuff that I consider like great, like that's part of who I am. Mm-hmm. Like my fiance is not into my son. So you have seen those movies? Oh, a hundred. Yes, of course. Yes, yes. Um, uh, th- they were like for me um i would say even though i can't quote them anymore um i I'd, I'd venture to say that back to the future more than anything else influenced me um the all three movies i i spent i had those on vhs mm-hmm. and i wore them out one summer because every day i'd watch one of the movies i'd start on summer one summer day one i'd watch back to the future one day two part two day three part three and then i'd start all over mm-hmm. and I did wow. that for at you least two like summers. Do you like or, or uh, it... my favorite is uh, probably the the first one, uh, and always will be the first one. Um, I I like them; they're all good. I know a lot of people crap on the third one, but I enjoyed no, it's it. It's the second one that I normally hear people. Oh, uh, it's, you know, on, yeah, it's one of them. Ones, yeah, a lot of people are love the third one. Uh, it's just it's, that, I think there's just holes and just the silliness of I think playing multiple characters. I'm not I'm not too sure. I I haven't watched it with a critical eye. I, I watched it with a child's eye, 
And I was always fascinated with the future and this the idea of, you know, all the toys that were involved. And Yes. Hey there, super friends. It's Kev. Uh, we haven't done an old-fashioned commercial in quite some time. So I just wanted to pop in. Um, and first of all, thanks to Daniel for being on the show. Uh, he is such a fun listen. I can't wait uh, to get back to him. But first, I want to talk to you about how you can help support this show. Uh, several ways. A, leave a five-star review and rating on iTunes. The more people that listen to this show uh, means we get to do co- uh, more cool things, like live shows, which we'll get to in just a second. You can also go to our support link on awesomepodcast.com. We have a link to our Patreon there. Uh, If we can get our server costs covered, that would be such a great um, help towards doing more live shows because we can't always get our venue for free. Sometimes we got to pay for one. Um, Or even doing like I don't know, just really cool collaborative um, projects with other podcasts uh, or other uh, performers and stuff like that. And, of course, tell a friend. That's the simplest thing you can do. And hopefully uh, they dig the show enough to keep on tuning in. So iTunes reviews, Patreon, and tell a friend. Three easy ways uh, to help support this show. Now, I do have some news for you guys. I'm so excited to to, uh, finally announce this. We are going to be unofficially uh, part of the New York Comic Con. How can you unofficially be part of something? Easy. Uh, I'm just saying that we're the unofficial late night show of New York Comic Con because on October 7th, uh, 2016, at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we will be at the Producers Club performing our show live in front of an audience, obviously. Uh, So you can come. Tickets are $15. If you happen to be going to the screening of Once Upon a Time at the Rock Opera, you can save $5 and get your ticket for only $10. Go to tickets.awesomepodcast.com for more information. Again, one more time, tickets.awesomepodcast.com for more information. Now back to the show. Uh, I've like since then. I mean, I've always been fascinated with time travel, and I mean, I I was a late um, bloomer when it comes to Doctor Who. Uh, mm. Doctor Who is something that all, all my friends were like, "You got to watch this. You got to mm-hmm. watch it. You love time travel. You'll love this movie or this show." And I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll get to it." And I eventually sat down and uh, watched like the first uh, episode of the the new rebooted s- series mm-hmm. in 2005. I watched it. Probably I, f- I forget what year it was, but it was like well into the, that run, and like I, it took me three tries to watch that episode because it was just so slow. Uh, I eventually, like, now I actually enjoy the episode, but yeah, like time travel has always been a thing for me. Anytime I'm in kind of any kind of creative outlet where, or I'm talking to somebody about, like, I have a buddy who writes books. And, you know, I, at one point I was going to be writing a story and I was like, what if we introduce time travel to this? Like, I really want to talk time travel or write time travel. So back to the future for me was like hugely influenced. And like, I pushed that kind of stuff on, on like my son, like I was saying, wants to be, he seems like he's gonna be more like my fiance where he's not going to be really into pop culture, Mm -hmm. but because he wants to be like daddy like he's going to like he's heavily influenced by me and he i'm nurturing him into like the the nerd culture the geek culture or pop culture culture yeah he's just kind of on the outside of of the circle and he's like what is this world yeah it's i mean he's uh and i every time like video games which i i don't play all that often anymore because of said kids but like that was also a huge influence in my life uh yeah, just playing kids give like, you the- I'm, I'm I'm expecting that when I have children, that's when I can finally buy another Nintendo system. <laughs> See, it's funny because I still buy them, and and my fiance judges me. Like I bought an Xbox One in the beginning of the year, and, and she's like, "You're never gonna play it. You you have kids, you idiot." And mm-hmm. I'm like, "I'll play it. I'll play it every day. I guarantee it." And I I have it. I don't play it every day. Uh, but my like I said, my son's just getting to the point where he wants to play. Um, he's not good at it at all, but I mean, he's four. I'll, I'll give him a break. But yeah, he's like my fiance calls everything Nintendo. Like, oh, um, you're playing Nintendo right. as I'm sitting there holding an Xbox controller, bandage and all that stuff. Yeah, uh, yeah. So he and, and so that's gonna be him. Like, I know he's gonna he's gonna be that kid, which is like it's great. Like, it's it's whatever. But he's gonna be a mix of that nature and nurture that you talked about. Like, where he's he's part. You know, mom, part dad, where he's... Oh, he's four and a half. You got you got six months left, man. Clock's ticking. 
Get them well, I, just like do a clockwork orange screening day. It's just like everything. My my proudest moment is um, he hasn't watched more than I think he's finally watched the full uh, first movie as in like the original Star Wars. Mm. Um, he, he finally watched that whole movie and he's like he's a fan of Han Solo. Um, he he we, it took us, I think, three watches because the beginning for a kid, I guess, that young is kind of slow. Mm-hmm. Um, I enjoy it because it's it's a lot of dialogue, a little bit of action in that beginning movie. And I'm a dialogue guy. So like I really like the beginning of that movie. Um and then so he would fall asleep like right before the action started and the one the one day we just started it from where he left off and he was hooked because it was all action um and like that even though like, i would always consider my my personal trilogy like if i had a holy trilogy it would be back to the future my proudest moment is getting him to sit down and watch star wars because that's yeah. that's actually probably like a, like you said you're really close with your your uncle you said like mm-hmm. That my uncle, um, my maternal uncle, same way, like he was, he's the reason I'm the person I am today. Uh, yeah. And like he, he introduced me to Star Wars and I, and, and that's probably my happiest movie moment is, is sitting down and watching Star Wars with my uncle. And I'll always remember when you first see the Tusken Raider pop up, uh, it's scaring me as a, as a little yeah. kid. Like it just was a shock. And like, that's the memory I always go to when I think of my uncle is I, I think of that, that little moment in time. Um, and uh, yeah, it's I'm, I'm so the point is I'm glad I watched Star Wars with my kid. Yeah, I did. <laughs> um, I'm waiting on I, I I look forward to the moment. You know, I see these people, they, they videotape their children at the, you know, when Darth Vader reveals himself. Mm-hmm. Uh, spoiler alert, you know, Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> you never know. Hey, we got we got a new generation coming up. Yeah, but, yeah, it's true. But uh, so it's, and, and uh, he, uh, you know, in, in the kids' reactions and you know, like, it's, yeah. you know, it's the first time, I always wonder, it's like, did they, you know, did was it really the first time where they just like, okay, go reenact it, now daddy's rolling the tape. Um, but you know, I, do, I would like I, to I think it's genuine. To I love to have that moment with my children, just to have yeah. that because it's such a, you know, Star Wars is not. It's such a funny phenomenon for me because it's. I grew up with mostly watching because we had we had a we rented a bunch of VHSs and then the place we rented it from went out of business, so we kept all these. We had them all, and one <laughs> okay. of those was Return of the Jedi. And being young, you know, a year is a long time. So I think somewhere in there I saw episodes four and five, but we ended up with Return of the Jedi. So I ended up watching that on repeat throughout until I was 12. And it would always open up with a trailer for, you know, like all the other two films, like showing, you know, the trilogy is going to come out. And it's and I always thought, wow, I haven't seen that stuff. You know, it always seemed very foreign to me. And yeah. it's like, I want to see those movies, you know, all this, you know, the worm coming out of the meteor and, and yeah. just all these different things in Cloud City. And and then it seemed very, and, and uh, I was like, I wanted to, so, but all I knew was Jabba. And I knew, you know, uh, Luke kicked ass. I didn't yeah. see him as this kid, and I just, you know, and and like Yoda dying. Spoiler alert! And then, <laughs> and then, you know, it, and then happy and Ewoks. Ewoks. I mean, I was all about yeah. the Ewoks. You know, I love the Ewoks. But yeah. um, my point was is that I'm forgetting my point. But uh, it's it's the fact that uh, yeah, I grew. Up, I think I was just trying to make the point that I grew up with Return of the Jedi, yeah. and. Uh, I, I don't remember honestly the catalyst to what my point was, but oh, mm. but the, the top twenty, my top twenty films. I mean, I'm I I they're beloved to me, and I get it. You know, I look forward to release of Star Wars because it's a as a filmmaker, uh, and there's a great uh, it they they it is a it it's a it's a cultural phenomenon, and it's such an impact in the formula from one movie. Because it was, you know, just one movie that came and by happenstance happened to be just the right formula at the right time to just be, do gangbusters and create this, you know, multi-billion dollar industry that uh, that's grown and is so endearing and means as much as a spiritual uh, being to 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 a culture. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I absolutely, you know, I, I you know, it, I'm just saying the, the impact that a one film has had is incredible. Yeah. And, um, and to me as a, and through the eyes of a filmmaker, uh, it's a study and I, I, I applaud it for that. And, but I am, I'm very infused with the aesthetic of star Wars and then this sort of opera type of 
lore and I'm sold. You know, give me Star Wars. There's something very tangible, you know, very juicy. Like Disney knows how to sell, knows how to make things look good. Mm -hmm. Star Wars has a... It's it, if Disney wants to make sitcoms in twenty years off of Star Wars, I assure you they they will because there's it, there, there's a whole universe there to play. And I was joking, I was like, well, I guess they'll start making in twenty years. We'll have a Star Wars sitcom, and it's probably I would not watch too far that from the, dude. It's probably not too far from the. I've already thought of there needs to be a found footage film where a bunch of young kids from one planet say, "Hey, man, that that planet indoor." Dude, I've been here, and there's there's something freaky going on over there. <sighs> and so they go in the found footage, and uh, and they're like, you know, they're in the jungle of indoor. Is it indoor? Not indoor. The yeah. where, where's the where's the what's yeah. the planet that Yoda's on? Oh, um, Dagobah. Most likely. Dagobah. No, yeah, Dagobah. See, see, I'm, I'm really not that that I'm not a, I'm not a fan of Star Wars, but <laughs> but they're on Mos Eisley. So they've been they're, they're talking about, dude. I've been hearing there's there's some weird stuff going on over there. It's kind of Blair Witch, and it's like so they they're in there. It's like, Did you hear something? I mean, of course, it's a oh. freaking rainforest jungle. So of course, there's a bunch yeah. of but they hear this one thing, and it's like and you hear the you know it's like the Yoda laugh. I don't do Yoda yeah. at all, but yeah, it's yeah. like it's basically Miss Piggy that's old. But and then so you hear this ruffling. <laughs> And you just hear it's like Yoda's little laughter out from the voice, but it's all kind of creepy. So yeah. it's basically a Blair Witch parody, but with Yoda ah, instead of the, I love instead it. Of the witch. I would I would watch that in a heartbeat. That sounds <laughs> fantastic. And you're right. I mean, that really. I mean, and I, I, Disney will a hundred percent get their money, their four billion dollars back off of this franchise. They've already got it. I think they. Yeah. Mer- we don't know the merchandising numbers. That's so. true. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. They, and. They, and and I'm excited for everything. Like it's Star Wars for me was just like just a magical moment in time that was like, well, it happened years, uh, you know, I guess what, like s- seven years or so before I was born. But like I was able to sit down in like the early 90s, probably maybe very late 80s and mm-hmm. and watch it with my uncle and like be amazed at this you know, like space fantasy I was watching mm-hmm. and I, I think like the only other movie that made me feel like that up until episode seven came out was Guardians of the Galaxy, where I was like, Oh my god, this is like a cool space adventure that yeah. we haven't had in years. Like yeah. not like some it was just it's something that I want I, I will never like even if they make a shitty Star Wars movie, like, all right, I'll forget of it. Like like the, the the prequel trilogy, like a lot of people crap on and rightfully so, but like I'm glad that they're there. Like it, it brought a new generation of fans in at one point. Like there's people who there's kids out there who say, you know, I really like that, that Anakin Skywalker guy. Like that's my star Wars trilogy. Mm-hmm. And people are going to say that, you know, Ray and Finn, like they're my star Wars trilogy with episode seven through nine. Like I, it just brings new fans in and it, it embraces that fandom that I, I don't think there's another fandom that really touches star Wars at all. No, 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 not, not even star Trek. I would say, I, yeah. but- uh, yeah, no, I, 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 you know, the we, I think we needed the prequel trilogy. It, you know, it, it shows us what not to do. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I, but if, they're, they're, it's nice to pick out what's. I like taking what supposedly overall bad films and saying what's good about them, and yeah. you know, get, to give them credit where credit is due. And all yeah, three I of mean, them have their have their things that are good. I, about and them. and episode three, I, I'm not saying it was a great movie, but it was the best of the prequels, mm-hmm. and it was the one that like I sat down and after I left, I was like, well, I mean, I enjoyed it a little bit. Like it was the one I liked the most out of the three, and. And I, you know, and that's, you know, I would like to sit down and rewatch them and, and like try to sit down with somebody and talk about, let's just talk about the positive, like what happened that was good. Cause you're right. There's like that, that front that prequel trilogy has basically a negative, uh, you know, kind of, kind of whatever to it. Like, every, yeah. 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 That's it. Um, every, no one likes that trilogy really, except for like the generations, of the kids that were born there. And then even a lot of them have probably grown up and, and watched the originals and said, Oh yeah, these are not that great. But yeah, it, it's I still here. You know, I'll, I'll listen to the podcast that that I listen to. There'll, there'll be a younger, you know, a kid. Like I think most of the people are like in their late forties that host these podcasts, but then they'll get somebody who's about 10, 15 years behind or, you know, I think, you know, 10 behind, like 20 years below them. And yeah. they'll be like, you know, I, I like the prequels. I like Jar Jar. It's just weird. You know, oh, yeah. like, and it's like, wow. It's like, I, but you know, because it's, there's that, if it hits your childhood when everything's yeah. magical and yeah. you're, you're invited in, there again, there's, a, there's just that world. I really give credit to, to the sound design. Uh, yeah. I think because yeah. sound is sort of that hidden, that hidden lure 
that we mm-hmm. don't realize. It's like the conveyor belt we're on when we watch a movie. We're mesmer- We're looking at all the sound and paying attention to what's being said and what's going on. But the sound is really what's transporting us deeper into. So if you have good sound, it's really getting yeah. immersed into the into the world. And I, I f- forget I who who did this, but there's somebody who who showed a scene from some movie. It's not really important, but it was like a scene of a movie that was like really well uh, liked. And they showed that scene first without music. And it was like, just everyone watched it. and was like, Ooh, this, that's a really bad scene. Like, I don't like, this isn't a memorable scene at all. And then they played that same scene with the sound behind it. And it instantly, you know, Oh, that is the scene. That is that great scene from whatever movie it is. So sand ha- sound has a hundred percent to do with, making or breaking a film really yeah i i hope that i think there might be a documentary on skywalker sound um, on the studio where you know the, or at least where and I'm, I'm pretty sure it is skywalker sound I, I was seeing some behind the scenes stuff and uh it's just amazing you know a, a huge warehouse devoted to you know and all the toys they have you know and just what they do with them to make you know of course the sound is n- not even related to what you're looking at to what they're doing it with and it's just great it's what a great art and fun thing to do you know and just constantly c- come with these creative I- creative ways to replicate a sound exactly as it is seen on like you're trying to match it to what you're seeing on film it's yeah. just a, a great great little art and that that's, yeah. that's the beauty of film man i i one, one thing i i adore about being a film director a filmmaker is that film calls on all art, mm-hmm. all every art that you can think of, whether it be architecture, wardrobe design, painting, you know, uh, and then you get into the virtual world now. It it it's all film uses it all. It's all yeah, there. Yeah. yeah, and and I the I discovered probably let's see, I'm 32. I will say seven years ago at this point, like it hit me. I was like, you know, this is something I want to be in. I want to be in this world in some fashion. And, mm-hmm. and it's seven years later, I've still, I've done like little short videos here and there, but for the most part, like I haven't done anything yet. And, and my, my huge influence is, is Kevin Smith. I'm a big Kevin Smith guy. Mm-hmm. Um, I, and even, you know, you, despite his newer stuff being, you know, I can see where people are like, what's he thinking? I, I still enjoy it. I think it's wacky and whatnot. I think I, I give my hat goes off to him primarily for what he's doing now, just for like, you know, being bold and, you know, yeah. be audacious, man. Go with what you make, whatever you want to make. And he's doing it. And uh, yeah. And, uh, and the one thing that, uh, that he's, has always said, and, and that I, that's always stuck with me as someone who, who kind of wants to be a filmmaker at some point is like, he, like it's his movies never say a Kevin Smith film. Like a lot of a lot of movies do say that, like a whatever the director's is film. Mm-hmm. He he doesn't. I think it may say it at the end in the credits, but in the beginning, it never opens with a Kevin Smith film because right. his he's always gone on record as saying, "I'm I'm there to help make sure everyone's kind of doing their job." But it's not just me making the movie; it's everyone that's here is making this movie. Everyone here is a filmmaker. Everyone that's yeah. in well, the that cast or the crew for, for everybody, as long as yeah. the director because. The- one of your jobs as a director is a, a leader listens and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, a leader serves. A leader doesn't dictate. A leader, yeah. you know, and, and a good director, you're basically, you're leading your, this is your project. You're, you are mm-hmm. the leader. And so, and like Kubrick was, he was, you know, he has this, um, you know, he, he actually was a very much a open door uh, collaborator. He's kind of like, uh, you know, I don't know. I guess he's like the Hasbro of directors, you know, or, or just a, just like we have an open door policy for you to, you know, for any ideas you have. He would ask okay. his, you know, his, his primary actors like, well, how do you think this should be shot or how are you feeling? And he's like, if they're not feeling it. Then he'll shut down production for the day as he's Stanley Cooper. He can do that. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, that's, and that's great. Like, I, I love hearing stories like that because that's. Because I, I, I guess, like, obviously what you hear more of when you're when you're part of the general audience is usually the negative stories. Um, it's it's rare to hear those good stories. Like, one that always gets me is that there's, you know, obviously there's actors out there who, you know, they're not going to stand there and, and block or whatever. They have a stand in to, to, to do that or whatever. But John Goodman uh, on the set of Red State, like, he came out and, and was out there for blocking and whatnot. And Kevin Smith went up to him and said, dude, you we got a guy here for this you don't have to do that and john goodman was like nah man i'm, I'm here i'm 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 here to lead i'm here to to show everyone what's up and, and you know it's my job like i'm gonna stand out here and, and block and things like that when i hear positive stories from from an industry that like 
people want to hear nothing but the negative it's just always it's always great to hear Mm. yeah man i don't you know the negative side of things because everybody has so when people pick out negative things about other people and i think the i guess the i mean quote unquote common person your 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 non-celebrity tends to think that celebrities are invincible you know it's like the high school mentality you think the cool kid's invincible so you can make fun of them all you want or or, or say things about it's like no they're still a human being i mean all these things will still hurt if they heard them or so putting them in the spotlight and talking about their personal lives and are, are dragging out something they they how you know where they they fell you know their their sins into the public eye and just through the mud is is still as disastrous and harmful as if you did it to you know somebody you know you know who's close to you, and um, you know like I I gave myself liberty on the whole I didn't want to listen to Christian Bell's uh, outreach because I was like look I'm sure he just got caught and he got caught under st- circumstances and most talent will defend that it's like look that happens all the time on almost every probably every production yeah and uh, so it's just but then. My he Christian he he came out and Christian said that he was like look I I deserve you know and I was I was wrong I I've, we already apologized we're back to being drinking buddies and but you know make fun of it all you want I I I'm all for that because I deserve it you know I should get you know so he's like he kind of left an open door he's like kick me in the butt so when yeah. I but when I and I'm not a Family Guy watcher but I I've but everything I sort of the nuggets I get from Family Guy are pretty funny but yeah. and they they had that parody on. If you've never heard that, it's hilarious. Where we're, uh, they're playing the reel of, of the actual audio from Christian Bell and and uh, Peter, it's just it's like <laughs> it it it's funny stuff. It does. So all I can think about when Christian Bell is, you want me to trash your lights? You want me to trash them? And, and so you got Peter. Uh, what's his last name? Peter. I don't Peter know. Griffin. Yeah, Griffin. Uh, he's like. No, Mr. Bell, I don't want to trash your lights. No, it's just Christmas lights. Yeah, you know, it's just like his Christmas tree. So please don't <laughs> trash my Christmas tree. It's like we spent hours putting it up. It's just something along those lines of just innocence. Yeah. And uh, so it's just like the way they then now. So Family Guys helped it just be hilarious, even yeah. without Family Guys, uh, you know, input into it. But um, but no, overall, like we need to hear the. I mean, the news. That's why the media turn off the media and and just look. Uh, I read a lot of Quora, Quora dot com, and sometimes right. I'll, I'll I like to you know there's there's a lot of great stuff on there just from interesting people from you know the the not so spotlit you know because they're not celebrities or and, you know there's some you know, there's some people on there but people of all walks of life are on Quora answering these in depth questions with and these uh, very thorough answers of uh, just very it's very very touching and very eye opening. And very, you know, stuff I suspect that's out there. It's just good to hear it in detail. And there's just great, I mean, just like put an ear to, to the positive story. Sometimes just Google, go, go to go to a website about kids with cancer and listen to their, you know, and see their, their wish list or their, pra- any that stuff. That's a whole lot better than, uh, there's a website called This Is Not Porn. And that's a, a website dedicated to bringing out sort of the rare photos of celebrities. And, uh, you know, just like. I don't know. It'd be like Mr. T having a drink with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Just something you've never seen yeah. before. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, cool. But, uh, you know, it, it, it pays to just see. Then you don't think of people in a negative light. Because anytime somebody messes up in, in my world, it's like, dude, I get it. You know, it's just like yeah. no skin off my teeth. The You messed up. I mean, if you're doing it purposely or over and over and over again, then it might be an issue. But if people make mistakes, people make mistakes. You know, I'm. It's it's not... People ultimately, I walk out of here uh, and I believe people are ultimately good. It's just that people tend to be scared to act in in kindness Mm because somewhere along the line, a lot of people have lost the confidence to be bold in kindness. And that's why it's like when you're confident, I think the first reflex, the the first reflection of that is uh, the first fruit of it is is being kind. And uh, a, a confident person will, you know. And you see that on set. I mean, when uh, the most confident actors, the most well, balanced people, uh, will not bat, will not hesitate to talk to anybody, and and or hesitate to help somebody. And so, the, I, and I've told people over and over again, uh, and yet, of course, I have not met these people personally, but I would guarantee that Tom Hanks 
uh, you know, I've heard, and and I just think from Spielberg and Will Smith, these three guys, I mean, top three of the most powerful people in the industry, and they're all beloved. And I think they are also probably some of those humble, you know. Granted, I think what happens to be, I mean, I, I'll tie it up here with with that little bit is that celebrities, we it's a time issue, and 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 it's sad they they probably don't see the world uh, the same because of the rabid fans. They've probably seen it all as far as yeah. random strangers, because so they kind of get gun shy with pedestrians or or whatever it may be. So just for their own well being. You don't know if somebody's going to recognize you and want to stab you just because they're crazy or if they're, you know, if they're going to come and like just want to take a bunt, you know, or just really invade your space, which I think most people don't know not to do that. But you still have those people. So if you just say if you make eye contact with them, they're, that's come with like, oh, uh, what's this person want? You know, it's just like it's already prescribed to everybody who looks at them. But I think the the people who really want to who are self aware try to detox that. Out. I think Adam Sandler is really good about that. Uh, I have met him, and he's he's a you only hear good things about Adam Sandler. He's he's a phenomenal human being. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think I've ever heard a negative. Uh, you mentioned uh, three, four people now: uh, Spielberg, uh, Smith, mm-hmm. um, Tom Sandler, Hanks. and Tom Hanks. Yeah. I don't think I've ever heard a negative story about those guys, and they all just seem like legit dudes that are. And I, I'll, you know, maybe I won't include Spielberg in that because there's not really much aside. Like I usually, for his stuff, you don't. For me, as as part of the general audience, it's rare that I see him out on Front Street. But the other three you see, you know, everywhere. Uh, and, yeah, I've never heard a negative thing about them. Uh, I've never seen them obviously do anything, you know, that's like, oh, my God, why did they do that? Uh, they all seem like legit dudes. That I'd be like, oh, I'd love to sit down and have a beer with them. Yep, exactly. Well, well since you that, so you said that, the number one guy I would like to have a beer with is Mark Ruffalo. Oh, um, so that's a good – He's, he's – he, yeah, he's just he, like a – yeah, he. You know, I've al- I've always kind of been. I forget what I've. I, and honestly, before Avengers, like I know I've seen him in a ton of stuff. Mm-hmm. But and it's. I guess it's just like those little small or character act. Not even that. Probably major roles too. But uh, I've always anything I've ever seen him in. I've always been like, oh, yeah, I'm a fan of his. Like I, I really like his work. And like I think what he brought to Hulk slash Bruce Banner in Avengers and 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 whatnot. Um, like he made the role. Uh, I love. You know, he seems like I don't know. I, I don't know where I put him on my list. I don't. Definitely not number one. Mm-hmm. Number one guy I'd want to have a beer with in 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 that in the world of celebrity is it's such a tough one because I'm I'm not in that world. It's like I'm like who who do I love the most? Um, this is you know this is whoever like you. I, I it would probably be fun. Kevin Smith. It it would probably be Kevin Smith because yeah. it, like he's. Um, you know, anyone that listens to this show knows I'm a huge, huge fan. Uh, I, I mean, one of the reasons I started, you know, this show out, of, you know, out of all the other shows I've done, he is one of my influences with his podcasts. All right, we're gonna cut the show right there, um, and uh, we'll be back with Daniel next week to uh, finish our conversation. Uh, he is such a joy to talk to. I really enjoyed this conversation. Um, I believe it's in the second half, so the one that airs next week, uh, where we kind of talk about the rock opera a little bit more, and you can see or hear synapses firing in my brain. Uh, so. That's what I'm excited for you guys to listen to next week. Uh, And of course, remember these four things. Tell a friend about the show. Uh, Subscribe on iTunes and also rate and review us five stars on iTunes. If you can, if you can afford the extra scratch, go to our uh, support link and go to patreon.com slash awesome podcast and throw us some money. Every little bit helps cover our server costs so that we can put more money into the show and do things like live shows. Like, this is the last thing you have to remember, our uh, New York Comic Con show that we're doing at the Producers Club, October 7th at 10 p.m. Uh, we're also, I didn't say this in the commercial, after us, it's a two-show event. It's going to be Everything is Awesome, followed by Once Upon a Wine. So uh, tickets are 15 bucks, $10 if you're doing the screening as well. So go to tickets.awesomepodcast.com. Uh, for Everything is Awesome, I'm Kev, and we'll see you next time right here on awesomepodcast.com.